Everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here on location at AWS's reInvent Conference in Las Vegas. Our 11th year doing theCUBE and it's been quite a journey. This year more than ever, it's about a major change in generative AI driving, new changes for the next gen cloud. Obviously Amazon, the leading cloud, is laying out all the announcements. It's just getting kicked off and it's already buzzing with activity and we're excited to be part of day, two days of four days. And our next guest is Julie Sosa, head of sports, global professional services with AWS. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So, first of all, we, I, I love all the sports stuff going on, Prime, all the stat cast, and the yep. nerd stuff, and the football relationship, and that's very nerdy, which is, and it's data and stats, so like, props. So, but there's a lot more going on yep. in sports and tech with data. What's your role, what's your job? Then we can get into some of the cool yeah. things because you've got a lot of cool things going on in your yeah, job. Yeah, well, I do, I have a great job. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we're looking, we're really analyzing all of the trends um, and areas of opportunity for innovation in sport, right? And data, as you aptly noted, is a huge part of that. Um, we're collecting data in copious volumes that we never collected in sports before, right? When I was a kid growing up as a sports fan, the raw data of sports was a box score. <laughs> and that, you know, and you could read it and understand it. Now the raw data of sports yeah. is degrees of latitude and longitude, right? And it's coming in, in the case of the NFL, which you mentioned, 300 million <laughs> points of data per season. Yeah. F1, 1.1 million points of data per second off mm -hmm. those cars. So nobody's sitting there with a calculator yeah. or, or a clipboard figuring that out. That's that's a job for machine learning and AI. And then it becomes interesting, because you have all this data, what do you ask of it? You know, what do you do with that data? Yeah. That's the interesting part that we're, we're uh, doing a lot of work in right and now. And almost all sports were impacted. I was just, I was yeah. in a pro-am for the SAS championship and you guys are there. Yep. You, got the, you got the NFL, PGA, NHL, and pretty Formula much every, one. every sport, yeah. right? As you guys, what sports are, aren't you in? Um, I don't think there's a sport that we're not in per se because we're probably working with a broadcast partner Got or it. a team or a league. Um, you know, and the use cases vary, but mm -hmm. I will say that the theme that you've identified in, in terms of analytics is, is pervasive. I mean, if you're a, a league, you're looking at player health and safety and rule development mm -hmm. and, um, you know, refereeing and, and, yeah. and all of that sort of thing. If you're a team, it's, yeah. it's money ball, yeah. John, right? It's yeah. just game strategy, it's scouting and recruiting. And then ultimately, yeah. it's serving the fan. How do you tell new stories? How do you edify the fan? How do you engage them? Yeah. To zoom out and lay out the, the scope of the engagement you have with customers. Yeah. Because again, you just talk about three dimensions of right. the sports, running a team, um, the fan experience, facilities, all that stuff. Yeah. The scoreboard's got to be secure. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of weird things you don't think about. Like, right. someone can hack the scoreboard during a game, like, right. like that's a security problem. Right. Um, yep. So what is the sports teams, what's your engagement with, how do you engage with your customers? Sure. Take us through a, a day in the life of a, of, a, of a use case, they call you, you call them, them, they say, or you meet in the middle, they use the cloud, obviously. Yeah. What does the engagement look like? That's, that's a great question, and I think it goes back to sort of basic fundamental AWS principles in terms of we work backwards, right, from a customer need. And so oftentimes it is a customer saying we need to solve for mm -hmm. X or we have all this data, how do we get mm -hmm. insights out of it? How can you help us do that? Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow there's going to be a session that we're doing with the NHL about how do you even come up, you have data, how do you ask a question of it? What question yeah. do you ask? How do you build it? And then how do you tell the story, right? So the engagement model, yeah. um, you know, once we understand what their needs are and help them solve that, sometimes we can see around corners too mm -hmm. and say, hey, have you thought about this? Do you want to lean in a little yeah. bit more here? Or this would help. So it's a very collaborative process and that's what makes it so great is that you're working together towards a common yeah. goal to elevate a sport. You know, it's interesting, the sports I've, over the years, I've observed that you know, it was always very much an owner thing and they were very, I won't say tight with money around tech. Everything's on the field, as they say. Yeah. But now that it used to be antiquated and outdated, how modern have they gotten on their infrastructure, like storage? Because you have data, you get yeah. storage, they got other um, concession data. By the way, concession could be third party, so you need right. integration, right? So sure, sure. it's complicated. So yeah. how, where are they on the scale of modernization? Are some more sports ahead of others? Where, how does that factor in? Yeah. Some sports are ahead of others, some teams are more progressive than others, um, but I think everybody sees that the future is somewhat <laughs> inevitable and the future is actually now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, you're seeing increasing business insights yeah. and, and performance analytics staffs, mm -hmm. right? So one measure of this is, yeah. 
where are they hiring, right? And you're seeing more and more around yeah. data and technology. Um, and and it's a comp, you know it's a being competitive thing yeah. too. Look at these venues, right? You look at SoFi, you look at Allegiant here. Um, it, these are really high end technically advanced venues, and I think fans are starting yeah. to expect that. So even those who are like, I don't want to necessarily spend the money, I think fans are going to push them to deliver that sort of high-end technical experience. You know, it's very interesting, the multifaceted aspect of the economics impact. Stadium, you mentioned SoFi, amazing stadium, watch a game, amenities, all the views are great, right. but it's multi-purpose. Mm. The Olympics will be there. Yeah. I mean, so the economic, and where you are in the city, the role of the stadium, yeah. Oakland Raiders went from L lowest ranking money making team to what, top 10? Right, right. Or well, and what you're talking about, you, you're seeing this increasing trend towards districts, fan districts, right? So it's not an isolated venue out in the middle of nowhere, but, and, and you know, they're restaurants, bars, mm -hmm. you know, mixed use. I mean, I remember Foxborough, I thought was, used to be in the middle of nowhere. Now there's all these bars and hotels and yeah. restaurants, and you're starting to see some teams lean into those districts and say, you know what, let's share data with each other. So that a customer of one of us becomes a customer of four of us. Come to dinner before the game, go to the game, go to the bar afterwards, check into the hotel. Let's make this a yeah. rising tide lifting all boats. And so that's another data story too, is fans. Yeah. How do we share data about fans to super serve them? The fan experience, the stadium, which now is not just a stadium, it's the economics, it's the, it's yeah. the region of the, of the, of the area. How does the changing expectation change? With generative AI, we're seeing clearly that how I'm getting my sports, I have multi, multi, multiple, fact, multiple devices, sure. I'm on digital. Fans are not in the stands, they're going to stream. I remember when the Levi Stadium came out deal, they were, they were stuck to only broadcast within the IP address yeah, of the sure. stadium. So sure. they had restrictions, so sure. broadcast rights, how, how do the fans, so what is the changing landscape on the consumption side, and what are some of the changes you see on the producing the content, whether right. it's on the field and or captured on digital. Oh my gosh, there's so much there. So on the consumption side, I'll say the, the probably the biggest thing we've seen, we've seen this broadly across media and entertainment, is adoption of streaming platforms, right? So what that does when we're producing a game is you, you used to have, and you still do, this one-to-many, mm -hmm. right? They're broadcast. We're delivering one, the least offensive broadcast mm -hmm. we possibly can, <laughs> of the sporting event to a very <laughs> wide audience. And streaming, it lets people sort of choose their own adventure a little bit, right? So if you're watching mm -hmm. Thursday Night Football and you want the prime vision stat laden cast, you can opt into that. Yeah. You want to watch the Manning cast, you can watch that. So I think some of the, the adoption of these platforms let us deliver sports in unique and more personalized ways, right? And I think that's yeah. really exciting. You see what the NFL did with the Toy, toy mm -hmm. Story, right? And that is both leveraging mm -hmm. a platform, um, but also the technology, because you were using that tracking data yeah. to put, you know, you know, it's not Dak Prescott, it's Buzz Lightyear, right? And you're getting kids involved in a sport, and you can do that on streaming. What do you see in terms of communities out developing? Because you start to see a lot of um, user-generated brands come out of nowhere. Yeah. The guy who wears the same shirt on a, on a podcast becomes like a darling for the community, yeah. gets a million views. Well, like, but that that enters into this too. You don't, if you don't want to hear the, the broadcaster, you know, you can have an influencer call that <laughs> game. You can have a celebrity call that game. You could call that game, right? So, I mean, again, there's also a lot of rights in sports. Yeah. Sport, you know, I think that sometimes get un, gets underestimated. So the the geogating on the IP, yeah. like that's a real thing for real reasons from yeah. a distribution standpoint um, and a rights perspective. But I think I think those doors open. Yeah. And I think right now there's a lot of like, oh, we're going to try a lot of things. I look forward to the day that it's fan driven. So yeah. I get to choose yeah. what my broadcast <laughs> looks like, right? Yeah. And I want to be prompted for prop bets, yeah. uh, you know, or I want to be reminded to order pizza at halftime. Like all these things, I want explosions when there's a touchdown. I want my fantasy stats in real time. I want to chat with my yeah. friends or, you know, whatever, the place a real money bet, whatever. I think those, that sort of functionality and engagement and personalization will ultimately built into the, be built into the streaming I mean, environment. Personalization is absolutely a holy grail for yeah. generative AI. Uh, that comes back down to our circling back to data. Yeah. Where's the data equation? It's because you know I was saying to uh, Rothman who was on earlier, and I just saw Swami, and I'm like, data management is going to flip its head on, on its head because old school data management won't work. Right. 
So right. Well, then that's what we're seeing in sports too, is a lot of these generative AI use cases and other things you're thinking about require sort of a foundation, right? So getting yeah. your data, you know, getting a data strategy, a data warehouse, being able to, to have your data, and data means not just yeah. you know, the numbers, but it's also all of your content, your video. Putting all of that in a place that it can be accessed mm -hmm. um, and organized in a, in a way, I think opens up a lot of opportunity. So it does open up generative AI use cases, but it also, I mean, if you're a sports property, mm -hmm. You have all that video, all of that content, all of that data, and it's all tagged uniformly. Mm -hmm. It lets people, you know, you could go down the rabbit yeah. hole with fans and like, I want to see every goal scored in the third period yeah. with less than 30 seconds left that, you know, then was yeah. eclipsed by another goal, right? <laughs> What's the most exciting sport you had to stack rank? I know Formula One was just in Vegas. That's always sure. a hot one. My son is addicted to it now and we watch it on, on TV. We share screens. Um, he's got all the stats. Um, obviously football's huge. Yeah. Um, NHL, could someone say niche, but I'm a big Bruins fan, they just lost three in a row. Yes, but, they uh, did, uh, yes, uh, I know exactly who they were. They lost to Detroit, to, yeah. to New York, and then the Blue Jackets, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what's the most exciting sport right now? It's their jersey, by the way. Those white ones are just not working. I yeah, I think so. I think jerseys. so. I think you're the right. The data is probably going to show the fans don't like it. It's, it's, it's psychology. <laughs> Players probably don't like it either. Right. Um, we've data-driven decision making. Um, I, you know, you're asking me to choose between my favorite children. Um, I, they're all exciting in their own way, of course. Um, I like you. I'm a huge Boston Bruins fan, and I love the NHL, and so, and it's exciting to see what these analytics are doing for them, and they're really leaning into cloud production, which is a really interesting and you know burgeoning space right now. So, um, they're they're. You don't want to pick a favorite man. favorite yet? Which one? Which one's your favorite? What sport do you like the best? I watch a lot of hockey. You do. I do. You're a hockey fan. And well, and college football. I'm a Michigan Wolverine. Did a big win. Big, yeah. big win, congratulations. Oh, stressful. <laughs> you know, Jim Harbaugh is Palo Alto um, native, so yeah, you know, there a you lot go. of common, there uh, we go. good stuff. Well, what's, take us through your job, because I'm curious, like, what's the day in the life of your job? Um, what do you work on every day? Well, first of all, I have a rock star team. I mean, people, and then we all come out of the industry, so we're all yeah. trying to solve the problems that we had when we were on the other side of the table, right? So that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it ranges from, um, working directly with customers and doing that, okay, what are we yeah. trying to solve for here to trying to think about what's the next big thing? And I mean, AWS, I, I, you probably I mean, are seeing just the rapid yeah. fire of announcements coming in here. So keeping yeah. on top of all the tech here mm -hmm. and how it can apply to sports is yeah. a big part of my job too. And having conversations yeah. with our Gen AI leaders and saying, okay, yeah. help me understand this. Could this happen? What is What are unintended consequences of some of this technology? Yeah. And how do we safeguard and make sure security yeah. and responsibility is core in everything we yeah. do? So it's a, it's a lot of yeah. working with customers, working with an, and supporting a killer team yeah. and, um, and then staying up rest of it all and trying to figure yeah. out new ways to drive the industry forward. What's great is Andy Jassy is a big sports fan. Yeah. I was just at the game with him on the 17th, or the 16th, and went and watched the Kraken game. Uh, he was in New York for the Rangers game last week. I right. ran into a little bit there, but it's good when you got a company that's like sees the sports, but also it's business. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's its own thing. Yeah. It's not like right. just barter deals. I right. mean, like, right. yeah, they no. probably do some barter, but I'm sure the economics all will work out, but that's really, they have business needs. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, you can get really foundational, basic infrastructure needs, mm -hmm. but then there's also that, okay, tip of the spear, what's next, okay. and how do we dry, help you drive there and be a real innovation partner? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it is business, but I also think the cool thing about sports is it lets us at AWS yeah. tell the story of technology yeah. <laughs> and the cloud and that power in a really accessible, compelling way for the average person, right? Really, when Dave Vellante and I started theCUBE 13 years ago, we had a term called tech athlete. We would right. look at stars that were in the tech fields is like, like athletically, they go to events, they work hard, they, they deliver the goods. But now you actually got tech athletes. Yes. They're actually athletes who are into tech, they're into investing, they're much um, more leaning into tech mm -hmm. and the new economics around it. Yeah. Especially with the whole college football shifting of the of the College divisions. football, to that point, a very interesting thing. You're even seeing um, Sam Schwartzstein, who's the uh, on-air talent for Thursday Night Football, Prime Vision, tells the story, Arch Manning, you know, the, the darling of, of college football right now, he's majoring in data science, right? So just think about, think about the athletes yeah. of today, the, the, the nascent athletes of today, yeah. and what they're studying, and the yeah. they're leaning into tech, they're leaning into data science. Think about how they approach the game and how they play, yeah. and the longevity of those careers. It's yeah. going to be really exciting to see that shift. You know, the old expression, multi-tool player. Yeah. You have to be data savvy if you want to be learning in the meetings and or your growth. 100%. Personal growth mindset. I mean, it's, 
from a performance perspective as well as a health and safety perspective too, right? Optimizing your training and all of that, so I agree. Well, great to have you on. I could talk for hours on sports and tech. We should do it again, but since we don't have a lot of time, <laughs> tell us what's on your agenda for the next couple of months. What's on, what are your goals? What are you guys trying to do for the next year? What's, what's the roadmap look like for you? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're the big themes we're seeing are really still around this data and because we're still early days. I, you know, I've been asked, you know, we hit the, you know, the pinnacle of this data explosion in sports and my answer is usually like, oh honey, we just getting started. Uh, <laughs> so, so I think there's still a lot of use cases around yeah. data. Um, also live cloud production, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. I think you're yeah. going to start to see the sports industry realize that this is more economical. It, yeah. There's time savings. Your carbon footprint is far reduced and you can attract a diversity of talent if you start producing in the cloud. So that, I think that yeah. we're, there's a lot of energy around How that. early is that? Is that, what's the progress bar in, in editing in the cloud in your mind? Oh, we do it now. You can. You can edit in the so cloud So we can now. pull our stuff in the 100%. cloud? We actually have a demo down on the floor showing it. Okay, um, we'll, so yeah. We'll do a flyby. Julie, thank you for coming thank on. Thank you. Appreciate it, your time. Uh, great, engaging conversation. We're sharing the data. We're sports up here doing tech. We love it. Uh, most of the Cube's been covering this sport, AWS reInvent ecosystem, for 13 years. 11th year at reInvent. And again, the game is just getting started. Generate AI is going to change the game. The data relationship to AI is going to be really symbiotic. Data to AI, AI, AI to data. The role of the human as the creative source and all this will be the key to success. New economic models, new business models, all happening in sports. You got the coverage here on theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.